future. It's right here in this factory. You belong here. No, I belong with Nicola in London. No, you belong here. Well, you toast my journey. But to leave your family and home for a job shopping in London. Well, marketing. Richard Bailey has offered me and Nicola positions marketing real estate. You're breaking me out, Charlie. To you, Dad. <coughs> Shoes can protect a man's journey, but only his heart can choose the path. And so a toast to our old Charlie. May you never fail to point your shoes back home. To Charlie! would be proud to see you standing here, Mr. Price. Oh, Christ, George, you know me all my life. Call me Charlie. Price and son must have a Mr. Price. <laughs> Mr. Price. So I'm glad you brought that up. You see, my father always assumed that one day I'd take over the factory, but I never said I would. Oh, shit, he said. He's just the waiting below. A word or two, sir. Better appreciate hearing from the new head of Price and son. No, that's really not necessary. Just a word, sir. Oi, oi, quiet down. <coughs> the little prince got something to say. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, cheers. Thanks for the flowers and the notes and, um, and whatnot. Perhaps a word of encouragement about the future. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Let's keep making shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Great shoes. And good luck with that. Wow, that wanker's got away with words. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Price, come quick! Chambers have sent back their entire shoe order. After you, Mr. Price. Can someone sign so I can take the rest of his shoes off my truck? Is there something wrong with them? Can <laughs> <laughs> someone who cares sign our cheek up? All right, Pat, I guess we should put these in the storeroom. The Chambers winter shoe order is already in there. What are these? The Chambers spring shoe order. Currently manufacturing? The Chambers summer shoe order, and it's a big one. Are you telling me we have a year's worth of shoes and no one to buy them? It started some time back. Chambers cut down orders, but cutting back production would have made cutting back workers' hours, and your father wouldn't hear of it. I would have thought he told you. 
But then you were busy at university and with your girl. Well, what's to be done with all these shoes? Once or twice your father sold overstock to the discounting. So it's happened before? Never as bad as this. Actually, of late, he seemed less concerned. He said he settled on some sort of plan. Sort of plan? What sort of plan? George? George! Harry, to you, to your father, yeah. <laughs> it was a gentleman. And to yours. <laughs> 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 well, mate, I assume you need to come all the way to London just to buy me a drink. It seems we find ourselves with 600 pairs of brogues and no buyers. Chambers finally cancelled your orders completely, yeah, yeah. But then I remember the time that your father found his stock short, and my dad, at no small expense, took on the task of filling the shortfall. No fair. 108 in history. Look, I'll give them to you at cost, huh? <laughs> cost, Harry. For old time's sake. Ah, see this, Charlie? I import them from Slovakia and sell them for a fraction of your cost. Yeah, but they're shite. The price shoe will last a man a lifetime. The poor soddy buys these, will need new ones in a season. And I'll be right there to sell them, but they're at a very affordable price. Everything the same, poor people stay poor because they buy cheap shoes. You ever hear the saying, no matter how far down the wrong road you've gone, turn back. Selling our fingers is only going to prolong the inevitable. But tell me, Charlie. Is manufacturing shoes really what you have to count to? Oh, it's selling cheap imports, your aspiration. My life was nothing more than shoes, you found me swinging by my time on the steam pipe. My guitar, my mates, my music on my escape. It ain't perfect, but it's what I got. Remember the part where our fathers went to spend the end of the day. Remember the
All right, fellas, let's take it easy now. Oh, I like it, darling. We can start out as you take it from there. I'm all for progress. Oh, come on, gents, I think maybe you've had your fun. I want my sin, mind your own business. Let the lady go on her way. Don't take our place in your fancy. Uh, Step aside, sir. I can handle the likes of these. <laughs> <laughs>
and they call me Kinky. <laughs> well, as Oscar Wilde said, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Lord. Tell me I'm not inspired something. <laughs> Burgundy. <laughs> the club, you said... <laughs>
here, dear. Yeah, but they're all stilettos. It's physically impossible to make a stiletto heel or can bear the weight of a full grown man. <laughs> Not so. <laughs> if we could mold the steel, one piece from ball to heel, we earn the pennies and we make it so. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we underpin it and we make it so not even Don could break it. <laughs> yeah, you think? We can do it! We can do it! We can do where you come in. And if we'd only laugh down the land, they'll have to be executed <coughs> so impeccably that no one can deny we're coming to be reckoned with. And that, God help us, is, is where I come in. Three weeks. Three weeks, Lola, that's all I'm asking. <coughs> no taxi or a police car. <laughs> Guess I'll find out when I offer him money. Do you want to use more than a The easy thing, or maybe even the sensible thing, would be for you to walk off and have a laugh about the time some nut offered you a job designing kinky boots, but I promise you, if you do, the rest of your life you'll wonder. What if I had said yes? What if I had stayed? A designer. A designer! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I could get used to the name. Kinky boots. Or better yet. Lola's Kinky Boots! Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. I hope you know you're gonna have to make me a new sign. <laughs> and I warn you, it had better be red! Shoes for men. We will begin this century 
Street, making a range of shoes for a range of men. <laughs> no deny is do or die, but do me well. Are there any questions? No, right, let's make boots. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just get your signature on these checks, Mr. Price. Uh, George, it's Charlie, Mr. Price. You've earned it. Today, at least. <laughs> Mr. Price, eh? It's better than being, what else can I do, Charlie? Nah. I'm take charge, Charlie, all the way now. Thanks to you. Anytime. No, I mean it. Thanks to you. Thank you. Charlie, can I get your opinion in? Excuse me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't you dare. Go, go, go. I'm warning you. Oh, no. I think I've got a crush. I can't. I think I'm falling for it.
you down for not doing my bidding. As clever as you are, Rick. <laughs> Come on, George. He's going to make Bryce and Son the town joke, and you know. How could I know no such thing? At Fisticuffs last night, the fellas from Delaney's Shoes was calling us slaves of the puff. <laughs> if the lady's about to shut her, what would think those boys would do better than to drink their money away? <laughs> Meanwhile, last time I looked, you lot were still on the payroll here! So why don't you stifle your yaps and earn your keep? some bobs to catch in the machines. Thanks for your support. In a gown, I can bellow Brunhilde in front of 500 drunks and have a laugh. But put me in men's clothes, and I can't sod him up saying that. What am I doing with child? Becoming a designer. Did they ever ask to be one? Did you always want to be a performer? I mean, when you were a kid? Whatever it was I wanted as a kid, my father beat out of me. Your dad hit you? Not like that. He was a boxer. Yeah? <coughs> a proper prize fighter he was. You never got the title match you wanted. But, presented with a baby boy. Well, he didn't raise the champion <coughs> counter his head. His son would. So he didn't know about. Of course he knew. But he figured if he pushed me, trained me himself. You heard right. I am a professionally trained boxer with a dozen amateur bouts to my name. So don't try me. <laughs> but when I appeared for a fight in a white cocktail dress, <laughs> <laughs> he disarmed me. Refused to see me. He then came down with lung cancer. It's ironic. Bags, <laughs> 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 and you? You like making shoes? The day I was born, Dad set me down next in line of Price and Son. For him, a gun deal. But for me, uh, first opportunity, I grabbed my childhood sweetheart and jumped on the next train out of town. What was it he ran off to do? Anything but what he wanted. And yet, here you are. Here I am. When I was just a kid, everything I did was to be.
Charlie. 
I have found the craziest solution for the factory. Oh, slow down, Charlie. <coughs> you said you'd hear us out, yeah? Look, I told you on the phone some of this is going to come as a shock. But you promised you'd listen with an open mind. Charlie, you remember my boss, Richard Bailey? I was almost your boss too, eh, mate? Sorry about your dad. Well, I hope once the dust settles, maybe you'll come back and work with us. In any event, I have to say I am totally mad for this project. Look, not all buildings deserve a second life, but yours is special. Second life? I'll let the man talk, darling. Price and Son, Riverside Apartments. One, two, and three bedroom loft style homes with all the luxuries. How exciting is that? Look at the detail. It's not what you change about a building, it's what you preserve that marks a great conversion. Wait, what makes you think we're up for conversion? You promised to hear the man out. Price and Son is not the same. Actually, it is. Unless you want to see it fall close. If you'd listen, you'd know that I found a no! solution. No! Charlie, come quick! The Angel's train has just pulled in! The front my boots are my final polish, but we can't unveil them without you! Oh, hello! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one designing Charlie's new line of transvestite footwear. <laughs> <laughs>
shoes. 